from Hollywood, California. We are here to celebrate the Swan Princess's 25th anniversary. I'm Valerie Cameron. And I'm Colton Tran. And tonight we celebrate not only the 25 years of the Swan Princess, which premieres tonight, but the remastered release of the Swan Princess in Ultra HD on Blu-ray. And we have an exciting evening headed for you because behind me is the pink carpet and we have the producers and we have the director and we have some of the most amazing cast from the original movie. And right now, we want you to take a look at the original trailer for 25 years ago. Go on, Derek. <laughs> As children, Prince Derek and Princess Odette weren't exactly the best of friends. But as they grew up, they began to see each other differently. Then, before their kingdoms could unite, Odette was stolen away by an evil enchanter. Odette is mine. Transforming her with a powerful spell. Wherever you are, I'm gonna find you. The Swan Princess. An exciting, delighting, magical musical fantasy. Beauty and glamour and green match. Princesses on parade. Featuring the voices of John Cleese. To the rescue, mademoiselle. Sandy Duncan. Queen coming through here. Excuse me, excuse me. Jack Palance. Don't give me that look, Missy. And Stephen Wright. No, 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 no. Now, Odette the Swan and her fateful friends from the forest are searching for Prince Derek to reveal the Swan's secret, a spell that can only be broken by looking beyond feathers to find the beauty inside. Hello, Derek. Odette. Come share a timeless tale of legendary love. The Swan Princess, an enchanting animated adventure. It is so cool to see how far the Swan Princess has come over the last 25 years. You've seen the pink suit, you've seen the pink car, and now the pink Vespa. But this guy right next to me needs no introduction. He is one of the executive producers of the Swan Princess. How you doing, Selden? You know what? I'm doing great. The stress is technically over because the event has started. It's going on. The show must go on. So, so now it's just fun for you. <laughs> How do you think, what do you think about all of this over 25 years? Well, it, it's completely humbling to tell you the truth. First of all, it's humbling. I still can't believe it's 25 years. But in addition to that, it's, it's one of these things that, are, that, that you say, how did this happen to where the franchise is vibrant and in the minds of people today? Ones that saw it when they were three and four and five years old, saying this is their childhood and their very favorite film of all time, even as they are adults. Did you even imagine that was going to be a thing when you sat down and you guys created this film? Absolutely not. You don't project forward necessarily on them. I mean, you have dreams that you'll have success and you don't, won't lose money. Okay, but you don't have dreams about the fact of how it's affected people so dramatically. The, the amount of people that have come out of this film and said, this has given me confidence as a woman to a man, given me confidence to sing songs that I absolutely love. You know, it's just, it's just amazing what it's done for people. Well, you've mentioned children and men and women, people all over the world that love this. Why do you think it resonates so well with everyone? Well. I think, first of all, you have to build a really great story. And when you build a really great story, it will eventually come home, right? But you had beautiful music. You had cliches and sayings that were so philosophical and perfect for people. But if you take one element that is really amazing, and I was told this by one particular individual that was a critic that said, no one, no one in the film industry has ever created eight minutes of a song in the very beginning of the film that draws you in. It is the best of any opening of any film. And with all of that and with 25 years of everything that's come to this point right here, where do you see the brand going in the future? Uh, listen, it, it, this is another launch of the brand in a sense. 25 years having an ultra high def 
4K, you get this opportunity. It's going to relaunch to all these people again in its beautiful, gorgeous, original form in the new film format that is going to allow everyone to play it and all families that grew up on it and children that grew up on it, their adults will be raising their children. It goes on and on and on forever. Well, I think we all agree. We want to go on this journey with you. I feel like your suit is high definition tonight. <laughs> I totally love it. Thank you, Selden Young, so much. We're going to hear from him more later on this tonight, but we kind of want to see what's going on upstairs with Colton in the W Hotel. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Valerie. Tonight we are getting is, tonight features a musical performance by Anna Graceman, who she actually sang one of the songs on Swan Princess Four. <laughs> this is Swan Princess Four, and you guys, we have cake contests, um, which judged by cake by Courtney, which is amazing, K uh, Courtney Rich, and the winner is going to be announced live on air as well. Um, we're going to be looking at some of the amazing live art produced here, and of course, wonderful Swan Princess art displayed all over the place. And we're going to give a, uh, there's a special giveaway as well. And we're going to talk to the man himself, Richard Rich. So, and you know what, Valerie, I might even get a selfie with him. You're going to get a selfie with Richard Rich? I mean, why wouldn't I? Come well, on. Do I get to come take a selfie with you guys? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> It is an amazing night ahead of us, and you can see behind me that there is a lot going on. We have cosplayers, we have fans, we have press, and we're just having such a great time. And Colton, I know that you have a lot of really cool things to look at up there, and even some tasty treats. I do, you guys. There's so much going on up here right now. First of all, there's like some of the actual animation sales that are up here. The cake contest, there's candy, stuffed animals, you got a ton of people dressed up in amazing costumes. You guys, they look beautiful. Um, there's a lot happening, and I, Valerie, I can't wait for you to come here and see it in person. So I get all the beautiful people on the red carpet, and you get the candy. I how do. Did, how come I don't get any candy? <laughs> I mean, you can have some. You just have to come here and get it. You better be <laughs> saving me some candy. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're in Hollywood, and we have with us right now Steve Gordon. He's one of the key animators on The Swan Princess and supervisor. Hi, how are you doing? Doing great. Okay, we have a couple of questions to ask you okay. with, about, about The Swan Princess. Um, 25 years ago, what attracted you to this project? Uh, the money, no. <laughs> no, I've been working with Rick Rich for years before this, and um, it just was a natural progression for us to move into this. We've been looking to try to make a feature for quite a while. And this one came up and it seemed like a good one to go with. It, you know, a lot of the uh, Princess films were doing well and we, we felt we had a good take on it. So I felt excited to work on this. That's amazing. I mean, it was a good choice. The Swan yeah. Princess is a lot of people's favorites. Yeah, um, cool. Okay, so, nice. so did you ever imagine that here tonight, like, that you like, you working on this film would like lead to something like this? No, not at all. I, I had no idea. In fact, yeah, I go to a lot of comic cons and fan events and stuff, and I'm always amazed at how many people come up to me and want to talk about the Swan Princess from all ilks of life and everything else. It's just astounding. Female, male, and everything else. It's great. And especially seeing something 
this, like, yeah. wow, people from yeah. all around the world. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, this is uh, pretty amazing. I would never have imagined this. Okay, so over, over the past 25 years, um, like, what, how do you, okay, so what fans, the fans all over the world, how they've responded to your artwork, like knowing that you've created a lot of these characters from the film, how does that make you feel? Oh, it, it's, it's quite, it makes me feel really good. It's very heartwarming. It's uh, always nice to hear that. I, so I was a big part of their childhood. It's very strange, but it's, it, it's nice. It's really nice to hear that. Okay, and we want to talk about some of the artwork that's going to be happening tonight. Um, okay. I just want to know, like, what is your take on that? And are you excited to be creating artwork live in front I'm of not, people? I'm not drawing art. Who's going to be doing artwork? No, no, we've got a couple of um, uh, young ladies that oh, I, cool, yes, cool, amazing. that I helped find that, that are wonderful artists that they're going to be doing the artwork live. And, and I'm just going to be kicking back and enjoying this. Great, this you're doing a great job. No, so these artists that you found, do they have this similar, like, art style that you have? Yeah, I, I knew their work from online and from past ex experience with them and I knew that um, that they could do the work easily and it would th complement the uh, art style and stuff you know if we were actually making the movie now I would have hired them to work on it so Amazing. so they, they're definitely very skilled and capable of doing it so very very cool um, okay so you, oh, so you created a lot of the original drawings in the original Swamp Princess yeah um, so Oh, we want to talk about some of the clothings and designs and everything that you see all over the place. How, how does it make you feel? That, like You said it makes you feel great to see that, but how, how is it, honestly, to see what you've done that long ago just be all around you right now? Well, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, to see my, my uh, designs and artwork living this long and uh, in so many people's memories and, and they're fond of it and happy and to see all this stuff that Selden has put together and taken and ran with it, it's quite astounding to me. Because it's not, it's not every day that you are a part of a film that does so well, you yeah. know what I mean? Especially an animated film during that time. Yeah, no, it's very nice. Can we talk about the new piece of artwork that you created for yeah. The Swamp Princess? Yeah, this was a piece, I, you know, originally when we first talk, started talking about this event and, they, and I heard they were doing it and they invited me to it, I said, you know, I've got a bunch of prints that I sell normally at Comic-Con featuring this Odette and Derek and such, and the animals. And I said, you know, asked them if they wanted to use those. And then it came up, the idea that I'll create something brand new that's specific to this event. And so uh, the last Comic-Con I was at, or one of the last Comic-Cons I was at, I forget which one it was now, uh, the uh, young lady that they used to play Odette at their comic booth, or their con booth, uh, contacted me and she wanted to collaborate on a design specific to her that wasn't the exact Odette look but was similar enough to Odette that it would be recognizable but something unique uh, specific to this event, a 25th anniversary dress. Very, very cool. I actually so. saw the art and I think it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Cool. I love thank how you. the style is, is different from the original. But it's yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but it's, it's still in keeping. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing. All right, Valerie, back to you. You know, Colton, when animation comes together with music and voices, magic happens. And I've got someone pretty magical with me right now, Nina. Now, Nina, you have been involved with this film, and you're the voice of Odette. Yes, I am. It's can, been so fun. Can you tell me a little bit about what that journey is like, being the voice of a character that resonates so well with so many? Well, it's really a, an honor to play a character like Odette because I have found that there's such a beauty and a strength in her and I have been inspired by learning about her character as I walk into her shoes and it's really fun to do a film like this. It's been a really uh, one of my favorite things I've done as an artist yet. <laughs> and you look absolutely amazing by the way. I am totally jealous with the dress that is happening. Do you want to give a shout out? Oh, I would like to thank um, my parents and my family and my friends because um, they helped me embrace this long cape. They were like, "Do not ask for, do not ask for uh, forgiveness. You drape that cape." And I was like, "Yes, I love that about Odette in these uh, most recent movies too. Is that she keeps 
stepping into her strength and um, and I feel like that's such a fun part of playing a princess is that the vulnerability is a form of strength and um, I've loved being able to um, step into those shoes and I've got to tell you, anytime you can wear a cape, do it. Even on a Tuesday, just getting tacos, wear a cape, wear a cape. because it's amazing. Now, looking behind you on this pink carpet back here and seeing all of these amazing, talented people dressed up like a character that you have brought to life, I mean, it has to be kind of weird, but kind of magical at the same time. It is. It is both of those things. And it's so fun, too, to see all the little ones dressed up as Odette, because I remember my first time being exposed to the Swan Princess as a little one, and all of the princesses were role models. And, um, and I just wanted to grow up and be elegant and kind like that. And it's fun to see them stepping into their princess gowns as well and wearing them without shame. <laughs> well, in thinking of all of those little boys and little girls that watch the movie and love it, what advice would you give them, you know, as they're singing along to the movie and thinking maybe they want to do something like this someday like you do, what advice would you give them? I would say that the more you can continue to sing the songs that speak to your heart and um, and really find music or write music um, or create characters that um, that speak to you in your own journey, that the closer you get to knowing yourself, the more you'll find uh, parts in the world or opportunities as an artist to get an opportunity to share a bit of yourself, whether it be through a character or through something original that you create. Now, it's been 25 years, way back in 1994, and we want to take a look about what happened back in 1994 with this story. The prince and princess were on hand to greet partygoers at the spectacular Chateau de la Napoule. Other forest dwellers from the Swan Princess also made the scene. They have three new films in the works. We're not competing with Disney. We are competing with uh, an expectation that audiences have, uh, what an animated feature is, and that's our goal, is to entertain families together. That's what we'd like to do. In recent years, Disney's animated movies have gathered armfuls of Academy Awards and made truckloads of money. With millions at stake, Nest executives are hoping the Swan Princess will become a classic. Just the thought that Crown Prince Derrick Inside the castle, party guests were able to view a few scenes from the movie. Next, they enjoyed a banquet fit for a king. Check out the dessert in the shape of a swan. And a fireworks display ended an enchanted evening. I can't believe I'm stuck with her all summer. Oh, but she doesn't wrestle hunt or box. It's so no bummer. If, if I, I get, get lucky, lucky, I'll get chicken pox. So happy you could come. So happy to be here. How I want to run. This is not my This idea. isn't my idea of fun. The children seem to get along quite nicely. We'll join our lambs if this arrangement clicks. My dear King William, that's my point. Precisely. It's such good parenting. And politics, so happy we agree. I think we've got the deal. Derek's quite a okay. Next Entertainment presents this floating fairyland from the new animated motion picture, The Swan Princess, which I saw last week. It's ter it, terrific. It is terrific. The enchanted princess Odette and Prince Derek will sing far longer than forever as they take us to a beautiful land far, far away. I think I see you, Captain. Beauty and glamour and breeding on the map. The princess is on our way. Lovely and thralling and all unattached. The hoi polloi and those well-bred agree each enjoy a royal pedigree. Hoi for success. Each possesses a spark. Each a remarkable maid. Boy, oh boy, these royal highnesses all have pluses. They've no minuses. Gaze upon now these princesses on parade. You're here. 
song, Willard? We are live in Hollywood at the 25th anniversary of the Swan Princess. And anytime you talk about princesses, you have to talk about cake. And I'm so happy because I'm down here. I am not upstairs with the cakes, but I have something better. I have Courtney here. Now, Courtney, tell us all about the cakes. They're incredible. There's seven entrants and um, seven different cakes up there. They're all so unique, all la layered, tiered cakes, really intricate, and they all represent the Swan Princess in a very different way, and they're gorgeous. I don't know how we're gonna cut into them. They're works of art. I mean, you have a tough job. You have a show. <laughs> you have <laughs> cake, uh, cakes by Courtney, right? And so you now get to basically decide which one's the best cake. Do you get to taste them too, I hope? Yes, yeah. I already went through and we went on technique and design, um, creativity, and then the only thing I haven't marked yet is the taste. We're going to cut into them, serve them up to everyone. There's going to be a lot of cake, but that's the final final mark to judge. And you guys are going to save me a piece, right? Oh, absolutely. You're going to need it after all this standing. <laughs> Colton, you're up there with the cakes. Can you please tell me what I'm missing? Valerie, um, these cakes are absolutely amazing. I mean, literally, they're so intricate. You should see some of the, des like the designs. They have every single one of the characters on them. Some of them look like they're actually sitting on the lake. I mean, one of the cakes has every single character from the entire film. There's Odette. Puffin, Speed, John Bob, like Derek, <laughs> Uberta, everyone. It's absolutely beautiful. And they put like, even Valerie, I cannot wait for you to come up here and see these cakes and then you and I are gonna have to sneak a piece. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Courtney judges these because they all look amazing to me. Okay, so I have a surprise guest with me, and I'm going to help you come up Thank here. Really, you look amazing. Help. Well, there are a lot of beautiful princesses here today, and I'm, it's, it's a lot to live up to. <laughs> we're going to let Hollywood do its thing really quick because we're live and let that go by. But I've got Liz Calloway with me, the beautiful, beautiful voice of Odette. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here on this amazing occasion. 25 years. What does that mean to you? It means I'm old. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it means so much that this movie that has meant so much to so many people is still going strong now for a whole new generation of, of boys and girls and adults. And it's, um, it's a very special film, and I'm so um, fortunate to have been a part of it. So all of the songs that you get to sing, do you have a favorite verse or a favorite song? I know it's hard to choose. It's like children. But do you have a favorite moment of yours? Well, I love Far Longer Than Forever. Um, I just, I think it's a beautiful song. I think it's so romantic and... I love it. I also am a fond of, uh, f very fond of This Is My Idea. I think it's a brilliant <laughs> song and a brilliant sequence. I just watched um, the movie again about three weeks ago on my iPad, and I forgot what a good movie it is. And I can't wait to see it on the big screen tonight. Now, you watched it on your iPad, and tonight we're also celebrating that it's coming out on digital HD. I mean, so this is a big deal. 25 years ago, now we're going to get it in HD, and it's, it's resonating with a whole new audience of people. Why do you think that it has lasted this long? 25 years later, new generations, there are little girls that were not alive yes. <laughs> when they even thought of this movie, when it came out in theaters, and they're dressed up like Odette. Why do you think it resonates so well? Well, I think it's a, it's a, um, a, Odette is an amazing character. She's a fantastic, strong, feisty woman, girl, swan. I think it's a beautiful love story, um, which is a little unusual, I think. It's like a, a real pure love story, and it's uh, timeless, and it's a beautiful, you know, it's also visually a stunning movie. And of course, there's nothing like great music. Um, I think that really stays with people. I do a lot of concerts around the country, and I talk about you know the animated movies I've worked on, and I've had so many people come up to me and say, "Swan Princess, that was the soundtrack to my childhood," and I love I love that so much. And when you do 
uh, a movie like this, you don't, you have no idea the impact you're going to have. You you do it in the recording studio, and <laughs> you call it a day, and then you maybe watch Cross it. Cross your fingers. Hope. Yeah, yeah, you hope. <laughs> and then you know, uh, you know all the videos and DVDs, and now Blu-ray. You know the Blu-ray version coming out. It's it lives in people's homes, and so I think that um, I think then people have a, like a real personal uh, reaction to the movie that you, you might not always get by just seeing it in a movie theater the, right. that for one time. Um, so I'm thrilled, I'm amazed. I, I didn't think it had been 25 years, <laughs> but it's <laughs> been really, <laughs> yeah, but it's been really nice revisiting it and revisiting the song and seeing the movie again and seeing some people I, I worked with that I haven't seen in 25 years. Well, this was such a special moment. Thank you so much, oh, Liz. My pleasure. And speaking of all of that, we are going to take a look back at how well this resonated with so many people over this much time. Thank you so much. Thank you. People really love that movie. I just was in Houston this past weekend, and I have a you know I have a book of stills of all the films I worked on, and people are like, oh my God, Swan Princess, that's my favorite. It was I have all these Disney things, but people. You know, they love that film, so it's it's really gratifying because when it came out, uh, it didn't do as well as we had hoped it would do, and so you know, we moved on to other things or whatever. But it's really stood the test of time, and people really love it, which is really gratifying. Yeah, it's been amazing to look back to realize how well that film was received at the time. So yes, yeah, I'm surprised that that much time has gone by, and it still has interest in the minds of people. Valerie, some of the most amazing art has been created for the Swan Princess, and it still is. Right now we have two artists demonstrating live how to create the old cell animations, and I want to give you a closer look. Right now she is creating some original artwork of Speed, the turtle. Yeah, I've, uh, so I have a question for you. Um, so w were, you, were you a fan of the Swan Princess growing up? Oh yeah, one of my favorite films, The Swamp Princess. I love the designs. It's a beautiful film. Yeah, see, I'm watching it right now, and it's absolutely amazing. And also, being an artist right now, when like visual effects and all these other types of art are like very big, it's is, is it? It's amazing to be able to do something that's two D and by pencil and not digitally. Do, are you would, you? would you prefer that over digital? Uh, I actually work in a primarily digital format in my job, but it's always nice to go back and do use traditional materials and really get a feel. There's nothing like pencil on paper. There, I agree. There's nothing like pencil on paper. You guys, this is. I can't wait for you guys to see how this artwork looks. This artwork looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, the creatively, like, like, what type of art do you typically do? Yeah, like, what, what got you into art in the first place? So what got me into art is I just love cartoons. I loved watching cartoons as a kid, animated films. Um, what I do primarily right now, I'm actually a storyboard artist at DreamWorks TV Animation. So um, I do mostly storyboards, a lot of rough drawing, and uh, it's what I really love. I have a deep passion for it. The night is a star-studded celebration of not only the original Swan Princess movie, but also the 10th installment of the franchise, which will be released later on this year. And Richard Rich has directed all 10 installments. We'll hear more from Richard later on in the show. So many exciting things happening tonight at the 25th anniversary of The Swan Princess. And with me now is Jared Brown, one of the executive producers of the movie. What do you think about the night? 
Well, it's a wonderful night and a great celebration for a great film. Do you have some cool memories that you want to share with us from the past 25 years or even the making of the movie? Well, the, ma the making of the movie uh, began actually when we started doing a lot of uh, small uh, half-hour films that were done animated on uh, things like uh, the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, and American heroes. And after we did all of those things, uh, Rick wanted to get in and do a feature animation. So he kept working on me. Finally, after I read the script, and I kind of twisted Selden's arm, and <laughs> so there we went. We went and started the production of Swan Princess. And, of course, there's uh, a lot more that's happened since then. Frankly, uh, Selden's one that carried the ball for most of it, for the sequels and all the rest. So he's, he's the one that deserves the most of the credit. What do you? I, I got a sim, but he, he carried the ball. <laughs> You wound him up and he just kept going, right? <laughs> what do you think about the fandom of this movie and all of the celebrating around the world from what you guys have brought to the big screen? Well, it's, it's really uh, almost hard to believe. In fact, I've gone to a few of the uh, uh, Fan X or the, uh, I can't think what they're called, Comic Cons with Selden and watching the people come up to the booth and watching the response out of people that have remembered this film and that have loved it for all these years it's uh, it's really a gratifying thing to see this and you know after 25 years who would have believed that it would still be such a big thing yeah you have you know people like me where it's my generation i grew up with it but then you've got little kids behind us that are in the costumes that love the music that love the movie and they're just going to keep going with it like, that's a big deal. It's true. And uh, actually, I know it's a hard thing to believe, but I have 16 grandchildren, and they all <laughs> they all love them, along with, you know, my kids all grew up with them. Of course, part of the thing when we developed a lot of these stories, uh, I did a lot of that as the pencil tests and the rest were done. I'd bring those in and have my kids kind of be the sounding boards as we uh, began developing different uh, things in the animated films that we did. So they helped a lot in kind of being the critique, and I know what they liked and I know what they didn't like. But one of the things I always worked on in all of these films is I wanted to have a real sense of, first of all, uh, the principle base, the moral base in it. But secondly, I wanted humor, and I was I was I was a huge fan of the Warner Brothers uh, films, you know, all the, all of the different characters that were done in the animated uh, cartoons. And I not that I turned all this into a cartoon, but I wanted to see that there was a lot of fun and there was a lot of, you know, slapstick and the type of things that really make little kids, you know, enjoy a, an animated film. Well, I just wanted to say well done, sir. What a great film and what a great celebration. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Colton, I want to know what you have going up there. I hear you have stuff now. You have swag. You have things up there that I don't have down here. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of things up here. We have stuffed animals, costumes, coloring books, candy, and of course, we have all the hand-painted cells. Right behind me are all the hand-painted, a lot of the hand-painted cells from the original film. You guys, I mean, tonight is bringing in people from all around the world, and they just can't get enough of all the swamp cells all over the place. All right, you guys, and um, the, all this stuff, the cells and like the coloring books, candy, all that is, can be found on the Swan Princess website, which is www.swanprincessseries.com. Um, and you guys, the costumes that you can get, actually right now since Halloween's coming up, you guys who are watching, you go on the website, you can get Odette's dresses, you can get them for your kids, for adults, you can also get the necklaces. All the stuff that's on the website is absolutely amazing. And this is just an example. You guys can actually get some of the actual cells from the original Swan Princess on the website. You guys, yeah, right? These have to be like some of the favorite things in this entire like premiere that I've seen so far because seeing all that hard work that was put into this originally 25 years ago is, is, is amazing. And this, has, this probably is my favorite merchandise. So you guys, you need to check out these cells because you can buy them online and also here at the premiere. The hundreds of wonderful reviews that the Swan Princess received. The story continuously evolves from concept to script, which are actually sculpted into lifelike voices are recorded, and then the animators, then the real magic of animation comes to life, filmed one by one to give the illusion of movement. I can't believe that it's been 25 years, honestly. I'm, I'm still in shock, and especially when people come up to me and say, are you kidding me? It's 25 years? This was my childhood. 
25 years have gone by far too fast. 25 years ago, it seems like an eternity in one way, but it seems like yesterday when we did all this. The Swarm Princess has so many fans. You know, I had no idea that it would continue all these years. I can't believe it's been 25 years since the film was done. I'm Richard Rich, the director of The Swarm Princess. You know, there are some things that just seem to age well, like a fairy tale where evil takes on love and loses. Such is the Swan Princess. And even 25 years later, it has not lost its charm. What do you say we go back 25 years? <laughs> On the planet, pray to be invited to the ball. Every Porsche, Guinevere, and Janet would come by. My name is Rick Farmelo, and I am the head animator on Puffin. Johannes thinks he's a prince. <clears throat> I owe you, princess, and I intend on staying until me debt is paid. Well, as far as the design goes, we start out with uh, a character that looks pretty similar to a real puffin and then you evolve him and make him more cartoony and add your own kind of touches and your own style and pretty soon he evolves into a a, a more pleasant design <laughs> at ease odette i can smell a human a mile away <laughs> he's saying i can smell a human a mile away and he's laughing and also the arrow comes through and scares him my name is Donald Towns, and I'm the background supervisor. My job basically entails uh, seeing to it that the look of the film is consistent with uh, what the director is looking for. Um, basically, I get the layouts from the layout department. So we take that information and put it in color. <laughs> I'm a, a special effects animator, and the scenes come to me from the uh, cleanup department. There's a, a, a part in our film where Odette turns from her human form into a swan, and there's also times when she turns back, and that's going to be a, a, a spectacular effect. We're, we're still working on exactly how we're going to do it, but it's going to have a bunch of different elements in it, and it should be really exciting when it's done. Steve Gordon. I'm the character designer and animation supervisor. Go ahead and laugh. I'll get her to kiss me. And when she does... And when she does, poof, you'll change into a prince. I know, I know. You've told me. There's not a lot we could do to create a different looking frog. It took us a long time to create something. And I think once we clued into having John Cleese as the voice, that helped a lot. They kind of gave us an attitude that we could use. Hello, this is your wake-up call. Hello, this is your wake-up call. Hello, this is your wake-up call. That's funny. It's great to have an actor like John Cleese because he can make up lines on the set like, I'll fry your back legs in butter. Have your back legs fried in butter. But I just want to say, I gave John Cleese that line because I remember he laughed. He said, what would be, what, 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 what would a frog really fear? And I said, uh, fry your black legs in butter? And he laughed. I thought, I made John Cleese laugh. You think he's dead? No, it's just his wing, I think. Strange looking though. Poor fellow. So right he must be in a lot of pain. pain. You better hold him. I remember well the search to find a voice for Princess Odette. It proved to be quite a challenge. We tested many excellent actresses, but I was looking for that unique princess quality in the sound of the voice itself. Then came to audition the late Michelle Nicastro. She gave Odette her inner beauty, her charm, her courage, her endearing love. 
and made Odette an iconic princess in the world of animation. I hadn't been basing her on anyone in particular, you know, and which is unusual for me because that's kind of my character design mode is I kind of find a star or, or a celebrity or someone that I can reference. And you know, she was just kind of completely something that I worked out with Rick until, you know, we were both happy with something, something that I felt comfortable that I could draw over and over and something that he thought was pretty and so forth. So it worked out, you know, pretty simply. Very little is ever cut or edited from a finished animated film. Once animation is completed, changes can cost as much as $500,000 a minute. So anything cut or changed is almost out of the question. There was, there was at least one scene that got changed in the original Swan Princess, and that was the catch and fire sequence. How about a quick round of catch and fire? Catch and fire? You mean me? And Derek having to catch an arrow and then shoot, turn around and shoot an apple off of Bromley's head. The original version had Bromley just standing there, uh, cowering and shivering at worrying about an arrow flying at his head. And what ultimately had to happen was we had to put armor on Bromley. Well, initially, when we discovered this problem, we discussed just cutting out that entire scene. But we found out that we couldn't eliminate it after we studied it because the end of the show was dependent on Derek getting the arrow from Bromley so he could shoot the great animal. So we finally discussed it and decided to reanimate the whole scene, which cost a lot. But in the end, it was actually a lot funnier with that armor gag. But uh, the main thing was is we didn't want to see someone hurt when they were imitating this scene. It takes about three to four hundred thousand of them to create the movie, both hand drawings and paintings. So I show you these animations, and you look at the, the beautiful perfectness of the lines that are done with the cell. I mean, it is a true painting. Everything's painted on the back of the cell. And if you look at these holes, these holes here for the artist to use and the camera to get the frame exactly right. It takes two or 24 cells per second as a minimum and up to as over 120 when you stack the cells on top of each other to create depth. Swan Princess is the world's most successful independent animated film movie franchise. I learned in life that persistence and never looking back or giving up are the secrets that make great films and great successes. As an independent studio, we did what everyone in the industry told us was impossible. We did it because we never gave up. I feel that the 2D has like almost like a, a magic to it that um, your brain fills in. We were forced to go to CGI because that's where the world is going. 2D versus CGI. We started on Swan Princess 4. We got to go on to Swan Princess 5, which allowed us to recreate and try to meet the models again. Did the same thing on 6, 7, 8. They get better every time we do it. If you look at 9, it's getting really close, and 10's going to be really fun. We love the fans, and the fans are loyal to us. And so a lot of our fans wanted us to do a digital remaster, a cleaning up of the original film. Happy 25th anniversary. 25 years have not dimmed my gratitude for the many wonderful people who made this one princess possible. It is because of them it lives on. Why Derek and Odette, Queen Uberta and Lord Rogers, John, Bob, Speed, and Puffin, and all the others will live on for future generations. If anything, the first 25 years of the Swan Princess have proven true love truly lasts far longer than forever. <laughs>
it's amazing that all that time has gone by, but it's so gratifying to see that, that people enjoy it as much as they do. It's, it's been a really fun ride. And of course, there's been a lot of sequels afterwards, and I've been able to write all of those. And so it's been, it's been a, a real honor. Well, I have a little trivia for the people watching at home okay. because you were the original narrator That's of true. the movie and you did a lot of the voices in many of the other movies. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm also, if uh, I just want to let you know, I'm the guy who dies and goes, ugh, in this oh. movie when you see it tonight. <laughs> I think I say, the great animal. They had to lower my voice, evidently it wasn't masculine enough or something, I don't know. So yeah, I've done, uh, there's a little chef in one of the movies, I'm that guy, and um, just a lot of like miscellaneous things. Um, and I did play Derek in the second and the third, the, the, uh, the two sequels. So Very cool. Let's talk about The Swan Princess, the ballet. Okay. And well, all right. and I mean, let's kind of get into that for a minute because, okay. you know, I, I think of the Swan Princess in two places now. I think of the ballet yeah. because I'm a dancer and yeah. grew up with that. And a lot of people think of that as well. And then you've got this movie. So tell us a little bit of how that inspired you, if all, uh, to write this film. Well, we certainly drew a lot from the um, from the traditional fairy tale. And of course, the ballet is based on the uh, traditional fairy tale. And so, you know, the names Rothbart and Odad, all the names come from it and the key elements. But of course, there was a lot. When you go to animation, there's a certain, um, you know, vibe to animation and it's a musical. So it kind of takes its on its own life as you start uh, writing for it. So but, you know, those main core pieces are there. So. How do you see it going into the future now? I mean, do you just want to keep writing and writing? I'll keep writing as long <laughs> as I have uh, the life and will to do it. And yeah, I mean, it's been great. I, we've we're on seat. We're on uh, Swan Princess Ten, which I don't think we call it that actually. But I mean, that's <laughs> that's the one that I just finished writing. And um, if there's an 11, 12, 13, I'll be happy to go for the ride. It's I, such fun. I think we're all willing to go for the ride. And we're going to throw it over now to this pink carpet that's behind that's us and see what's going on there. So behind me on the pink carpet, you just saw the legend uh, Richard Rich, and he's the one that has written or directed all 10 installments of the amazing Swan Princess. And we're here live in Hollywood at the 25th anniversary, and we have much more to come on some exciting things that are happening here at the W Hotel live in Hollywood, California. Take two. Well then, how about a quick round of catch and fire? That's, that's, that's good. That's great. You're the only one with enough c -c 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 courage. <laughs> and last but not least, the elusive 100 point white rabbit. Good heavens, child, don't dawdle. We can't keep Derek waiting. The children seem to get along quite nicely. My dear King William, that's my point, precisely. And politics, so happy we agree. Dare it's quite a catch. How I'd like to run. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, that was good, sweetie. That was really good. Lovely. <laughs> this princess comes from Portchester, where Paul and Cotton Rose in plain clothes. This princess comes from Portchester, where Paul and Cotton Rose in plain clothes. Come down, it's a little to take the father of these resistance. He hails from South East Park. And he and the father.
the pink carpet is almost empty behind me, and that can only mean one thing, and that means that, Colton, you're up there cutting cake, aren't you? You're eating without me. Um, and you were absolutely right, Val. I am up here right now with Courtney Rich, and we are about to taste some of these amazing cakes that were created. Oh my gosh, I'm so, this is the best part, let's be honest. They're all gorgeous, but taste is always number one for me. So, amazing, because yeah. they all look beautiful. Know, so it's hard, to, it's hard to cut into them, but it is hard to cut into. Do it, you know. We gotta do it. So let us try it. Let's try the first one. Okay. So careful. Now, oh yeah. Oh 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 yeah. Here we go. Okay. Did you ever get worried with how like? Did you ever get worried with like how they look sometimes? You know, oh, I, I mean, like I just get worried. They've been sitting here. Oh, that looks delicious. Maybe pumpkin. Where's a fork? Weston, do you have a fork for me? You, you guys, this is what this looks like. She's like, she guessed maybe pumpkin. Not sure. I guess we'll find out. My kids are here because they're really good taste testers. Amazing. Mm. That's pumpkin. Is, is pumpkin? Mm. She knows. <laughs> I, am, I knew I could smell it. Mm. I was asking her, I'm like, do you get a little worried sometimes when they look like, it's supposed to look like grass or dirt, you know? Not at all, because I know what's in there. It's the good stuff. <laughs> So, okay, so what do you guys look for when you taste a cake? Like, um, texture is really important. We don't want anything dry. We want a good crumb to it. There needs to be a moist texture to it. Um, it's got a great rise to it, really good flavor. It's not overwhelming. And the inside, it's got a nice whipped cream um, filling. It's really delicious. So you I'm like excited it? to try the rest of it. <laughs> He's like, I just ate the rest of it. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Should we, should we try another one? Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the next. Wow, th see this one's gonna be hard, you guys. It has a ton of characters all over it. We can see too, it's got a little bit of the sugar crystals on it, so we'll be really gentle with this one, but they're all edible. So here we go. I'm gonna take that sugar crystal off and I'm just gonna eat it. I know, oh, I think like I'll that? have to take a little bit of this off here. Not yet, let's hang on before we actually dig in and we'll get another. So the sugar crystal is kind of like, it's like rock candy. Yes, it's exactly that, yeah. Okay, here we go. I gotta be careful. I'm not a pro at cutting these tiered cakes. You're like, I'm not a pro at cutting, I'm just a pro at eating, okay? Leave me alone. That, oh, we got kids eating little parts. Okay guys, this one looks yummy. Okay, so what do you, what do you guess? Okay, this looks like a vanilla with a berry compote filling. So we'll get a bite of everything with a little, looks like a maybe Swiss meringue buttercream. Mm. That's really nice, it's got a good berry flavor. Really tender cake. She was right again. She was, she's always right. Yeah. When you're looking for something in your cakes, like you said texture and moisture, but is there anything else specifically when they look like this? Well, I mean, when we were looking at the design, definitely technique, um, neatness, creativity all play a part. So, I mean, that was really hard. They're all very different and have their own different style. So they all got graded a little bit differently. Taste is going to play a big factor for me since that's just a huge part of what I do. Um, and so I'm looking kind of for something unique that really stands out. I mean, for me, a great cake is one I remember tomorrow, the next day, a month from now, and I'm still thinking about, oh, I just, I want another bite of that cake. I yeah. I love that. Okay, so, so far with these two, do you prefer the pumpkin or the vanilla? Oh, should I tell you right now? Right now, I do love that pumpkin. It has a really good flavor. The spices in there are balanced really well. So it just, it, that, that's really good. But we still have five more cakes to eat. Are we, we do. Gonna... Let's go to the next one. Here we go. Okay. Don't eat the hair, okay? No, let's not eat the doll. Avery, can you hold the plate for me? Now, we have some fondant, so we just have to work around that a little bit. But it cuts really nicely. So what is fondant exactly? Fondant is, it can be made um, homemade or store-bought, but it's kind of a marshmallow feel and it's really a lot of bakers love to use it because you can see you get this really smooth design you can create certain um, design elements with fondant and it holds up really well under lights and for wedding cakes oh you're taking the first bite okay do it. uh oh here it goes well what did you guess what did you think oh, what did, what's oh your it looks like a yellow cake with some kind of vanilla buttercream <laughs> he's like she's always right dang it yeah yeah she was right once again, you guys. She obviously knows what she's doing. <laughs> um, so this stuff, is this made by fondant as well? The grass? It's like fondant. There's modeling chocolate being used in a lot of these. Um, oh, oh Avery got some of the fondant there. Okay. Well, we're going to okay. have to work our so, way to Okay, we're you guys, there's another table full of cakes. We're going to go over there right now. 
First of all, we're at the next kick right now. Look at the detail of all this. It's absolutely phenomenal. And, th and this has more of the, what's that called? Again? Is that pistachio? Uh, there's fondant and modeling chocolate. pistachio and there's some berry in here beautiful color nice and light whipped filling here so you got to have a little of everything in each of your bites so you can taste it all together mm. and were you right is it pistachio mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's insane. i mean that's why she does this for a living you know a lot of them have a lot of different flavors like this one I think it's a different flavor. That's a hard thing. I want to go back. You said each tier. In each tier. What you'll want to do, though, is try. You cut the whole top first, and then you'll, you'll really want to do the other side. But you can see, once you get past the fondant here, and I feel bad. I start to butcher the cakes a little bit. But we can get a little bit. Yeah. Oh, this one. You're, the second one. So, yeah, the second tier is a different cake. Do you think that's I think that's going to be pumpkin. Tis the season, you guys. <laughs> Glad I came hungry. <laughs> Pumpkin. Pumpkin. I feel bad we're eating in front of you. I mean, if I had a fork, I would be digging it. You know what? Who needs a fork? I'm going to try a little bite of this. Just grab it. Grab a little bit. Mmm. It's delicious. This is how we do it at home. Just fingers work. Mm hmm She's doing it. She's doing it. Fingers. Oh, wow. <laughs> how, how, how's, how's the cake? Is it yummy? Oh, that's good. What's, what's your favorite kind of cake? What, what's your you favorite? favorite what's flavor? what's the favorite thing about your mom doing cake? It's the cake. Oh, to taste the cake. I mean, that'd be my favorite thing too. <laughs> All, right, All right, you guys, three more. Here we go. Oh. It looks like we got a that's, bit of a marble. Yeah, that's really cool. And like the gold chips are really awesome. This one, it really is beautiful. You know how much they've got, like how much work they put into it. And I've done these competitions before, and it's hours and hours, and then traveling with the cake. It's just, I mean, these artists are truly incredible. And just for the moment of this, and then it's just devoured. But I mean. But do you know what? Eating the cake, I do. I think it's the best part because you get to share your creation with everyone, and they all are just so happy eating it. I mean, so much joy. Everyone will be smiling. And it's so fun that everyone will get to be able to take part of this. I love that. I mean, that's, that's so amazing. You know, thank you so much, Courtney. And Valerie, we're going to throw it back to the carpet. We are back here, and I am so honored to have with me Steve. Now, Steve, you are the husband of Michelle, and she was the original voice of Odette. Can you tell me a little bit about what she would have thought of this night? Well, you know, she was very accomplished. She did a lot. She did Broadway. She did a lot of films. She did a lot of television shows. But you never know when you're entering into something what the legacy will be or what will last. And most of the stuff that you see comes and goes, right? But um, we had no idea that we'd be here 25 years later talking about it. And it really meant enormous to her, enormous amount to her. We, um, my youngest daughter uh, was, uh, she got pregnant with my youngest, youngest daughter two months after the premiere. And Callie, our oldest daughter, was uh, a one-year-old when uh, it premiered. So it's been part of our family for a long time. And that's Michelle Nicastro, right? I just wanted to say that because I say Michelle because I watch her and you think that you're you know, and you hear her, you think she's a part of your family. Yeah. What do your kids, you know, how was it for them to just hear her voice, you know, because unfortunately she did pass away back in 2010 yeah. of breast cancer, but yeah. I mean, she's gonna live on forever in these it's films. Really comforting. It's really comforting to know that. It's meaningful to her and to us and our family. And um, I remember Callie, uh, she was three years old in, in preschool going and and her and mom her mom was a bit of a legend all the kids were like oh my god that's the swan princess and uh and callie had a little bit of you know she was sort of proud of that and she read this one princess book to all of her classmates and michelle sang and i, I remember it like it was this morning it really was it was very meaningful so so it, those kids all grew up they all knew michelle and they all um and they all love my wife and my kids are a, 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 a very much a representation of my wife yeah very much so in a very good way 
Well, I'm sure it's near and dear to your heart as it is to mine, but November is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And of yes. course, um, there is always in her honor, every year there's a cosplay competition um, that they hold. And wow. we have some of the winners wow. that are here. Um, and actually, um, we have a winner all the way from Russia. Krista wow. was the first online winner. She's here from Russia. And then Whitney and Jeff won recently in Salt Lake City um, at Fanex. Um, and we did this in honor of Michelle your wife wow. and they're right behind you wow. they're gonna come up here <laughs> absolutely amazing hi hello hi I'm Whitney and I'm her brother Jeffrey now what does this mean to you to, to enter a contest like this in his wife's honor the original voice of an amazing character I mean what does this character mean to you well, actually, we didn't know that there was going to be a competition when we decided to dress to, to up. Do the cosplay. And I think, you know, growing up in the 90s, this movie is just so part of our childhood and everyone our age that we talk to, that's the same thing that they have, you know. And he, he went to um, Comic-Con the year before, dressed as a very well-known sci-fi character, and not nearly as many people stopped to Stop take a picture to talk to us. as when we were dressed as Odette and Derek. Wow. Everyone wanted to, you know, take a picture of yeah, us. Yeah, and especially, you know, coming from Utah, um, where the producers were originally from, if I'm remembering correctly, um, and, uh, you know, it's such a, you know, it's such a fun film, but it's also a really... Uh, empowering film, you know, both uh, Odette and Derek, you know, uh, such interesting characters and their dynamic together, but really just the strength of them individually and the way they fight for each other. It's really touching and, it, you know, doing this in honor of uh, Michelle, right? Yeah, it was... Um, it's it's very wow. nice. Really touching. Thank yeah. you guys so and much. This is so much more than we ever thought of when we <laughs> yeah. decided to dress up. So you're not the only one that loves this fandom. Yeah. We all love it. Congratulations to the both of you, and thank you so much for being here. Now, um, you, they both get this check, um, and so I mean, we're presenting this five thousand dollar check um, in honor. North. Yes, Northwestern University in honor of your wife. I mean, for a scholarship fund, it's wow. just amazing. Thank you so much. My, my wife, uh, we, we, we met first day of class freshman year at Northwestern. Oh. Uh, so I've known her since I was 18. Oh my and uh, and she, when she passed away in 2010, they, the school rallied around her, developed a scholarship. So this will reward uh, many other students who are aspiring in her footsteps to be a singer and performer and uh, it's grateful. Thank you. It, it, the legacy of this movie keeps her legacy alive and Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. I'm not crying, you're crying. We're all gonna cry. <laughs> We're gonna go to a tribute to Michelle right now. Hi you guys, I'm here with Christina. She flew all the way from Russia to be here and her cosplay, look at her outfit. It's, she did Odette to a T, perfection. She looked absolutely beautiful. You guys, if I wish you could see a lot of these people dressed up here, it's phenomenal. How like, you guys, there are people dressed up like Odette, but Odette in every form. There's the wedding dress, there's the evil Odette. We have people dressed as Derek. Um, I mean, people that had different costumes just inspired by certain characters, and it's absolutely amazing to see how this, how this becomes. Actually, I was talking to her, and she does cosplay for a bunch of different characters besides just the Swan Princess. If you go on her Instagram, you could check out all of her cosplays she's done for Odette, and she's done different forms of Odette as well. Um, it's amazing. Hello. Whoa! Wow, what a party, huh? Now, you know what? My daughter, who's been engineering this, said, Dad, two sentences. I just said them. <laughs> but I have a couple more to say. 
welcome everyone. Um, I'm so happy that you're all here and participating in the 25 year anniversary. And, <laughs> now we have entertainment, one song for you from a very special artist. Her name is Anna Graceman. She was previously, when she was 13, Anna, was that, or 11? 11 on America's Got Talent, one of the runners up. And I'll tell you what, she's got an amazing talent. And as I have told her, she's one of my favorites. And I know she's gonna go the distance. She's got the character, charisma, and voice. And she's gonna sing the song from our Swan Princess for Season of Love that I wake up to every morning, her <laughs> voice. So Anna, take it away. Anna Graceman. So dark, so cold, no hope in your eyes. But I so hold on, I'll stay by your side, and I will go wherever you go. With me, you're never alone. I believe I can fly when we come together. It's a natural high when you bring me back. Then you came and changed my ways, changed my life, now nothing's the same. And I will go wherever you go, with me you're never alone. I believe I can fly when we come together, it's a natural you bring me back to life I believe we can live forever I believe in the season of love In the spirit of love We come together And I know that it's right I feel it inside I believe I can fly when we it's a natural high It brings me back to life I believe we can live forever I believe in the season of love the season of love Yeah Oh the season of love Thank you. Thank you, Selden. Thank you. Anna, that was absolutely fantastic. Just one other quick story on Anna. Yeah. So when we brought her into the studio at age 13, matter of fact, I think you just barely turned 13. Okay. Here this girl came in, and the composer, when she was singing, just taking it off and going like crazy with the song, no, no coaching whatsoever, sang the song all the way through, and the composer said, where did you find this unbelievable girl? And I'll never forget that comment from an unbelievable talent as she is. So, thank you, Anna. 
Let's go ahead and have some more fun. We're going to be. Yeah, what? What's that? Yes. Courtney? Okay. Thank you. Okay, now. Oh. Hey. Yep. Now we've got something very special for you, and I'm going to turn it over to Courtney Rich. Cakes by Courtney. Yes, cake by Courtney. Cake by Courtney, no cakes. It's cake by Courtney. Okay. Oh, my gosh, I'm so full. You guys, just so you know, this is going to get cut up. Okay, sorry, that's too low, that's too low for me. All right. Um, thank you, Selden. You guys, these cakes, did everyone get a chance to take a look at all the cakes and appreciate all the hard work. I was telling our contestants, I've done a, a fair share of competitions as well, and it is a lot of stress. Um, so I hope that they're having a relaxing time now because having your cake sit under hot lights for hours and hours is not an easy thing to watch. Um, so I applaud you. Let's give them a round of applause because those cakes are gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right. My kids here helped a little bit with judging. Um, we judge on creativity, on technique, on detail, and of course, my number one, on taste. We're gonna be cutting all of these cakes up, so make sure you get a slice. You're gonna love every single one of them, but we could only have one winner. Cake. <laughs> okay. We could have one winner, right, Avery? It's cake. It's cake. We are picking cake. Cake always wins in our house. Um, I don't know whose is whose, and so I numbered them, starting with number one right here, two, three, four, five, six, and number seven. Um, so after I looked at all my numbers and tallied them up, our winner, so you'll have to come up, is cake number four. I don't know, who is that? Okay, so tell us what were all your flavors in your cake. Um, you guys take a look before it gets cut up, but it was about five tiers. It was four tiers. Four tiers. So three of those tiers, the top three were real cake. The first tier was a pistachio cake with honey uh, Swiss meringue buttercream and a raspberry curd. Yep, that was good, I tried it. <sighs> one of my favorites. <laughs> the second one is a pumpkin cake with a cream, cream cheese, cheese with meringue buttercream. We were guessing even before we ate each slice. <laughs> she got everyone right. She, yeah. I did, I and got. And the third one was a banana cake with a peanut butter Swiss meringue buttercream. Yes, I did go back for that one too. I saw it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you to all Thank our you. contestants. You guys, it's gorgeous. I'm in awe, Thank you're you. amazing. Okay, you guys, I think this man needs no introduction, of course, but I'm super, super excited to be talking to Richard Rich, who um, is the director of the Swan Princess and all the Swan Princess series. Um, you guys, oh, as well as the Fox and the Hound, the Black Cauldron, the King and I. You guys, I mean, I love all of those films. So thank you so much, Rich, for talking to us. Thank you. Happy to be here today. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, are you just so excited that you've re-released the film in Ultra HD for Blu-ray? You know, that it never saw it coming, and it is the most exciting thing for a director to be able to have done a film 25 years ago and to take it into the state of the art of it existing, all the technology and possibilities that exist today. It was thrilling, and I can't wait for everyone to see it tonight. I'm, I'm, that's so amazing to have that happen and be a director of a film like that, and especially even have a 25 year, that's, congratulations, it's, it's amazing. I also wanted to ask you, because there's so many fans of the original, how long did it take to create the original Swan Princess? You know, from the day we got the idea to the day we released it, it was close to six years. Yeah. We, we, we got the idea and it took a long time to figure out if we could really do it. And then it took a, over a year and a half for Brian Nissen and I to write the story. And then it took two and a half years to actually make the film itself. Wow. See, that's the thing. I think. You know, people look at Hollywood and they see movies and they just are released and no one realizes the process or how long it takes for these things to actually come to life. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, and also, what was it like having over 300 people working on that original film? I mean, that's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. 
But what was so unique about this crew was that no one saw it as just a, a job. They came and gave their whole selves. We had something to prove by doing the Swan Princess. A little independent company, you know, and everyone came and they gave their very best every single day. And really the success of the film is because of what they gave to it. They gave not only their talent, but they gave their heart. And that made all the difference in the world. And that's what shows up on the screen, is the great talent that these people had. And we had a camaraderie. It was fun. People enjoyed it. Tonight, as I met with so many people that were there, they said, wasn't that just a great time of our life? And so we're just thrilled about that. And to like, see all this come to life, it's, this is really amazing. And Valerie, we, I've heard asking some questions too. Hey, I'm how are you? I'm up here. Okay. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. taking a moment with us. So she has a couple questions for you as well. Yeah, so I was wondering, you know, what is your most fond moment over the years with this movie and everything going on? Do you have a moment that just sticks out in your mind? Well, if I, may I talk about two? Yes, you may. <laughs> so what was, for me, absolutely an incredible moment was each time I had an actor or an actress in the recording stage to create the character for the first time. I could see at that moment that the character had life. John Bob, Speed, Puffin, Odette, Derek, it was incredible. From that moment, those were just incredible moments and I was so excited because I knew we had a movie because of the great voice talents that we had. The second one is quite emotional for me. It happened um, the week before we released the picture. We had a wrap party for all the crew and for um, all the uh, actors and actresses and everyone that worked on the picture and their families to come and we uh, were showing it at the Academy Theater in Westwood and we were so excited and I can remember standing up there and saying to everybody you know this was a picture against all odds no one thought we could ever do it no one cared about if we did it or not but we showed them that we could do it and I think that what was so incredible about the movie is that the heart that the movie has is the heart, the love that Derek and Odette bring to the film. It is a screen care, uh, chemistry that has not been matched in animation yet. No one has matched that. Their love is pure, their love is real. And I think that John Bob sums it up probably the best at that very tender moment towards the end of the picture where he says, well, there you have it, true love. And you did it, you did it. And congratulations on your silver anniversary. It's absolutely amazing. All these people are here because you created something magnificent and we're gonna remember it forever and we hope it keeps going. Thank you so much and thank you for having Thank you. Thank you so much, honestly, Rich, thank you. All right, you guys, now we're going to be introducing Leslie Noss. Yep, she's the, she's the wife to producer Terry Noss, who was one of the producers on The Swan Princess. Where's she at? You've been up here this whole time having so much fun. Um, wh wh where's Leslie? Hi. How are you? <laughs> All right, you guys, we have Leslie Noss here. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Are you having a good time? I am. I am. Great. Okay, you guys. Leslie Noss is the wife of the producer Terry Noss. Um, so Terry worked on some of the most, I mean, iconic animations yes. of this movie. And, you know, before his passing, what do you think drove his passion for, for the Swan Princess? He loved animation. Terry loved Rick, too. Terry and Rick worked at uh, Disney on The Fox and the Hound. And then when they left Disney, they went together and literally they started um, Rich Animation together. And so Terry loved just, he loved Disney from the time he was 15. He'd go there every year and fill out an application. Um, so he just loved work and he loved Rick. He was, he was very loyal because when they left together, Disney really called him back and said, come and work on Little Mermaid. And he said, no, I'm good. So that's loyalty, yeah. That is loyalty, and that's amazing. I mean, Rich has made some amazing films, and of course it sounds like your husband was a part of all that as well. They're a good, it was a friendship too. Working partnership, but a friendship, so. I, l I love that, I love that so much. All right, um, 
Do you have like a favorite moment? Of course, your husband worked on the film, but you're right there with him, you know, and you have those moments with him. Was there a moment that you love that you're just always going to remember? I just love Terry's faithfulness. Well, he loved God, and then he loved what he was doing, and, and he was all, I just, the thing, the, mo the word I would say most is just loyalty. He just enjoyed what he was doing, and um, I think he just left a legacy of friendship and s supporting your cause, um, you know, staying with what you believe in. When other people would say, what are, you do what are you doing there, you know, why don't you go back to here or there? He just, he enjoyed the work that he was doing and the group of people that he was working with. My husband was just very, a sensitive man. You don't find that sometimes. <laughs> um, so he was sensitive and um, just very caring. And I never saw him get angry at people or frustrated or he just he gave the benefit of the doubt sometimes when i would get frustrated he would say but maybe they're fr maybe they're they had a bad day or they were in traffic or something and i would say you're supposed to take my side <laughs> what a great legacy to leave what a great legacy all right and one last thing is i heard there was a secret i heard that terry was uh secretly in the swan princess at the end of the film yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, I heard it when you freeze frame at the very end of the film, where Derek from the Derek coming out from the wedding. He's, he's one of the footmen, and he's the one with the mustache. Yeah, we have some friends here with us tonight, and, and she said, that's the reason I came, to see Terry. <laughs> I'll see. Yeah. That's, all right. that's amazing. I I, you guys, I just want to thank everyone that came to the Swan Princess 25th anniversary for joining us here tonight. It's been a beautiful event, and thank you so much, thank Leslie, for much. speaking. Well, like she said, you know, maybe we should go watch this movie already. I think we should go watch this movie. I am very excited to see it. I haven't seen it for a couple of days. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, can't, I haven't seen the Ultra HD uh, remastered version yet, you guys, so it's gonna be great. And can we grab some cake? Oh, we'll definitely get you some cake, because you've been down on the carpet working hard, so let's have some fun. <laughs> thank Thanks you, everyone. Everybody.